Imagine trying to buy God's favor by giving big offerings to him. That's exactly what the people of Israel tried to do under King Ahaz, who was a compromising king. And we read about this practice in Psalm 50, where the Lord speaks to them and tells them these words in verse 12 of Psalm 50. If I were hungry, I would not tell you, for the world is mine and all its fullness. Will I eat the flesh of bulls or drink the blood of goats? Offer to God thanksgiving and pay your vows to the Most High. Call upon me in the day of trouble. I will deliver you and you shall glorify me. Sometimes it's possible to think that by giving offerings to God, he will overlook our misdeeds, our compromised living, and our lack of devotion to him. This is exactly what happened to the people of Israel. They were surrounded by various gods and people who believed in witchcraft and all kinds of other practices that were contrary to their walk with God. And it was convenient for them. They mixed their faith with the beliefs of the surrounding nations. They even made offerings to those gods. And then on the feast days of the nation of Israel, they came and gave offerings to God. And the Lord was just absolutely displeased with them because they thought that they could buy God's favor. Now, we may not be resorting to practices like that today. However, it's possible to live with various values and philosophies, even espouse secularism and materialism, and conduct our lives in ways that uh, depict our commitment to material things rather than to God. And then we may think that by giving large chunks of money or offerings to the Lord, that he just looks away from our compromised living. Actually, when it boils down to it, God doesn't need any of our offerings for his sustenance. He is not sustained by our offerings or by our giving. Giving is important and it is good for us to do so that we may put our lives in order and uh, put the God of mammon under our feet. But it is not a substitute for living righteously before God. And so that's why he berates them for their behavior. And when you live a compromised life, where your loyalties are divided, there is no possibility of having a heart of thanksgiving. The reason why some believers have a difficulty living a life of thanksgiving to the Lord is because when you probe deeper into those lives, there is compromise, syncretism, a mixture or divided loyalties somewhere inside. And here the Lord gives us a secret, what he really wants 
is not our material gifts, but he wants the offering of thanks that comes from a life that is living in conformity to his will and to his word. And so we are given the secret in uh, verses 17 uh, downwards about the type of reordering of our lives that God is pleased with. Actually, he pulls them up, as it were, and he scolds them for the things they do. For example, verse 17 says, Seeing you hate instruction and cast my words behind you. So God is displeased, even though they gave big offerings, that they cast his words behind them. So what does it mean to us today? It means that when we put his word in front of us and when we let his word go deep into the marrow of our being and transforms our lives, then we can offer the thanks that pleases him. Actually, the word of God can penetrate and pierce right into the marrow of our being as we read in Hebrews chapter 4 and verse 12. And the marrow is a place where our DNA is actually produced. And so when the scriptures tell us that, that the Holy Spirit can, with the word can pierce into the marrow of our being, it means that the word of God has such supernatural power that he can go and alter our traits and our behavior. The power of the word is so great. This is why it is important to put his words in front of us. And when we are guided by his word and it has gone deep into the marrow of our being, it will change our behavior. God again scolded them for their behavior. He said in verse 18, when you saw a thief, you consented with him. In other words, they were hand in hand with evildoers. Life change and transformation must take place. And when proper transformation takes place through the word of God, we can have an attitude and a heart of thanksgiving that brings honor to him. The most important thing is to have a heart of thanks that issues out of a life that is right with God. And the heart of thanks that comes out of that kind of a life will be able to face any situation, any trial or difficulty, because even in the midst of difficulties and pressures and uncertainty and anxiety about the future, when you know that you're walking with God and your life is a life of thanksgiving to him, that will keep your spirits up. Yes, you can have a heart of thanks. And that heart of thanks can come when you are walking with God and you allow his word to penetrate deep into the marrow of your being. You cannot buy God's favor by giving, but you can have God's favor by living in a way that he wants you to live. And that is the message of Psalm 50, God wants us to give him thanks out of a heart that is in covenant relationship with him. Father, we just thank you that all you desire from us is to be true to you and walk with you and honor you in every way through our lives. We pray that we be open to allow your word to see deep into our inner being. Change us and transform us, Lord, so that we may have a heart 
of thanks every day and every moment of our lives. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. May God give you grace to give him praise every moment of the day as you walk with him. God bless you.